Hi everybody, Jack Benedict here with Coach Kurt Signetti, and we come to you each and every week with the IUP Crimson Hawks. Well, 20 to 15 victory over California in the seventh annual Cold Bowl. That was some kind of game on a cold night, but a great atmosphere for football. And Coach, it took a lot of doing to win that game, and that's exactly what you did because Cal came out. Wow, like a house on fire and score the first time they had the, you know, the football. Yeah, and they took the ball. Yeah. They won the toss. There was a, a big wind, and they took the ball, so they were going against the wind. And they went right down the field and scored, and I thought we were on our heels a little bit starting out uh, defensively. Uh, you know, I, I was a tad uh, concerned going in. I, I knew we were very confident, but I just didn't quite feel the same uh, urgency that we had uh, some of the previous games. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think our confidence level was high, like we would win the game. And uh, they went right down there and knocked it in. But the offense responded with a, a, really two drives in a row. The first two drives, the game went in and scored. So, uh, you know, we were able to jump up, up top. Yeah, that was a pretty wild uh, first period there. They, they run out of punt formation, yeah. uh, something. But you know in games like this, where they're rivalry games and they mean a lot, both teams are going to pull out all stops, aren't they? Yeah, no doubt about it. And they did. Ha they had a little bit of a tricky punt formation they had shown on tape. And we, I'm not going to say we knew the fake was coming, but we were on high alert for a fake this week. And uh, just the way they did it was a little different. And our contained man uh, just got a little too tight. And Walt Pegues saved the day with a nice tackle. Mm -hmm. How about uh, Steve Franco's stop in the second period at the 14-yard line, yeah. a big play? Here he is. And, and you're trying to make, you know, when you make a tackle, but he's literally dancing with a 230-pound guy and stops him. Great play. Great play on fourth down. And he, he had two great plays. He had another one down on the goal line at the end of the game where he made a very similar tackle on an inside run. And, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of big plays and momentum shifts in that game. It just went back and forth. Yeah, and there aren't many games where you throw the ball seven times oh. and pass for 30 yards that you win. But the rushing game, you had it in yeah. tow once again. Uh, that was terrific. Yeah, we had 388 yards rushing and uh, had a lot, of, a lot of big runs. And when we jumped up by, you know, 11 points, uh, you, know, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't throw the ball a lot. I know we're going to have to throw it more. We're going to have to throw it more this week, obviously. Uh, but the, the run game was sensational. You know, the wind was a big factor in the game, I know, uh, from the standpoint. Yeah. The 80-yard punt that takes you to the, back to the one-yard line, boy. Now, the other thing that, uh, let me put it this way, were the lights a factor, too, on that? Because it's a little dimmer on that side of the field, I think, than yeah. it is at the other end. I don't think so. I think he just really hit it, and uh, it didn't have a lot of air, uh, but it went a long way. And Walt tried to make an over-the-shoulder catch and just couldn't come up with it. It ended up being... A, you know, about an 81-yard punt. Two years ago, they had a, about a 90-yard punt. So uh, two years in a row that they've come here. And, and uh, you know, we, we were really backed up in the second half uh, offensively with a lot of poor field position. But, uh, you know, and the special teams, uh, we had some, you know, mistakes on special teams again uh, that, you know, we overcame. Yeah, you did. Uh, even the fact, was it, was it an onside kick or not? I mean, the ball gets... Yeah. Well, it was a bloop. A bloop. A yeah, it was a bloop, and it was into the wind, so yeah. it didn't go very far, and, uh, and we didn't play it very well. But then again, you made a lot of big plays. How about the interception by your freshman, uh, young Mr. McHale, on the one-yard line? Now, from where we were, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know, you know, you were on the yeah. sideline. Is it in the end zone? Did IUP catch it? Did they right. hold on? But he yeah. said he took it away from him, stole it from him. Yeah, I mean, we, he definitely intercepted the pass. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, it was a tremendous play. Now, whether he was in the end zone, you can't really tell. Uh, but, uh, you know, our defense in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, the number of times Kel was in the low red uh, to hold him out, it was just uh, really a tremendous uh, effort. Uh, it was a little bit... Uh, Discouraging, I guess, is the word I'll use because you know we had the two-score lead, and uh, you know we, we we drive down the field the first drive of the second half. We have second and one on about the seven-yard line, and we have three cracks to make a yard, and we don't get it done. Uh, and uh, then we do jump up uh, by 11 points, and uh, you know we're doing pretty good. Get a couple runs, get a couple holding calls, and then we fumble an exchange on a run play, which kind of you know gave them the opportunity. To, they went down and scored, and then, then we had the kick where 
So there's two sudden changes right in a row. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that you know that's when our defense just shut the door on them completely. And we had a number of great individual uh, performances, obviously. And uh, offensively, you know, to get the ball back, and then we converted on the third down, and we were able to ice the game at the end. So I thought Kel played really hard, uh, and it was a good football game. And I think it was good to win a game like that where we were really tested, because we had not uh, we had been since uh, our opener pretty much out in front in most of the games by comfortable margins and have not been in a game like that. And uh, we responded like I thought we would with a lot of mental fortitude and uh, got it out, found a way to win the game. And uh, so I think it'll be good for us in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned about conversions, 6 for 11 third down conversions. Yeah. That's terrific. A game of third downs. You did it. No doubt about it. I mean, on offense, we were 6 for 11. And on defense, uh, you know, we held Kel to 2 for 14, yeah. which was big. And they were 3 for 7 in the red area, which was huge also. So, you know, those critical situations, uh, you know, the numbers favored us. Kurt, we knew going into the game they had the first conference uh, quarterback in James Harris, two great receivers. But they went to the running game a lot. And they were successful for a while against you, yeah, weren't they? Well, I think we played a little bit on defense. You know, they have a, a tremendous quarterback. I mean, he can throw the ball, make all the throws. They got two big time threats out there at receiver. And a lot of their drives coming into our game were quick scoring long play drives, whether it was a go route, a post route, receiver screen. You know, they didn't have a lot of long sustained drives. Mm -hmm. So we, we went in there a little bit, Ben, don't break. Uh, you know, trying not to give up the big play. They did get behind us once or twice and just didn't connect. Uh, but the running, you know, they got the running game going. They got a big line. They got a good running back. And, uh, you know, they got their yards rushing. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, we got done what we needed to get done. Yeah, you did. You know, in the fourth quarter there, your defense fourth and five at the seven. They try to pass. Mm -hmm. You guys held them on that particular situation again, yep. too. Because yep. uh, they tried to go to the tight end a couple of times, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and uh, you know they were all bang bang plays. And then the, you know the, the last series of the game, it's third and one, and uh, they run a toss sweep, same play they ran for touchdown the series before, and uh, great plays there by uh, CJ CJ Adegbo and uh, Kevin Clark, and they lose three yards, which sets up the fourth and four play at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. So eventually, to seal it, you need to get a first down, and you got a big 13-yard run from Chris Temple. Yeah, we did, and uh, you know we. We came out and ran the ball a little bit more out of four wides than we had in the past, and uh, we dialed that up, and uh, it was well blocked, and Chris broke in. And, you know, he knew the situation of the game, so he kind of went down, uh, and we were able to ice the clock. So it was a pretty interesting game. You know, I really felt like uh, we had it not in hand, but w where we wanted it, and then, uh, you know, we kind of let Kel back in it. And, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, just, uh, you know, they couldn't get the ball in the end zone because we wouldn't let them in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, we have talked many times about IUP and Cal and some of these games, of course, they're that uh, just unusual play that happened a few years ago. And, mm -hmm. and I know I think you guys had your mind put forth to it in the defense. How many times can you call upon the defense? They responded each and every time for you. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, so, just I mean, we refused to lose. Right. Now, you had mentioned on the post game, and I know your thought process is when you only throw for 30 yards and your rushing is one of the tops in the country, yeah. you'd like to pass more. You'd like to be more effective uh, going about that. It's, it's not that you don't practice it, uh, but it's just been the running game has been so great for you. Yeah, I mean, we were making plays in the run game, and, and we were ahead of the down and distance most of the time. So, you know, when our errors occurred, it was more of an offsides or a holding call, something like that which put us behind the down and distance. And uh, so, I mean, we're going to need to throw the ball more. I know that. And, uh, and we will. Mm. Uh, how different is it playing a night game? Because this was the night game at home, and now the Slippery Rock game is also a night game. Mm -hmm. I, I know I, I like night games, mm -hmm. but there's that long time to wait till the game comes. Yeah. You know, you get itchy to play. Uh, it's a different procedure, isn't it? It's a different routine. We got out and practiced on Thursday night. We're going to get out Wednesday night this week. Uh, you know, on game day, uh, w what we did uh, for this game is, uh, you know, we, we let the kids sleep in a little longer so that they weren't just hanging around all day long. You know, we fed them, uh, you know, at 12 o'clock mm -hmm. and then fed them again. But, 
So, uh, I mean, you got to be ready to play when it's time to play. Whenever they tell you. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, what, we can play at 8 in the morning. <laughs> we'll be ready to play. We'll be ready to play. Uh, Slippery Rock, uh, the next one up. Right, yeah. Great tradition between these two schools. Yeah. And, uh, again, uh, they are right below you. They're in with only one loss this mm -hmm. year. Um, let's see, they do a little bit of everything. They're scoring high this year, yeah. scoring a lot of points. Mm -hmm. uh, going in, you have a good mindset against it? Yeah, for the game. Oh, yeah, no mm -hmm. doubt. <laughs> I mean, we're going to be excited to play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Slippery Rock's a good football team, and, uh, you know, we're playing up at their place, which, uh, you know, we've played really well on the road. So, uh, you know, it's a lot at stake, but it's the next game up. It's going to be our preparation on a daily basis and our play, one play at a time, and you know, go up there and... Uh, that would be a great football game. You know, it's pretty interesting with four weeks remaining in the regular season, uh, how many important games for a lot of teams here. It's really going to be you know, down the stretch runs. Really exciting, I think. Yeah, it's that time of the year. Mm -hmm. So it's great for the... It's uh, good to be in the hunt, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we've put ourselves in that position. Uh, you know, we've earned where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, to get to where we want to get to and overcome the next challenge on Saturday, you know, we're going to have to uh, do the work and approach it right on a, on a daily basis. And that's kind of how we're looking at it. So, Were you pleased with uh, the overall, of course, with the victory at night, but the fan attendance, it was a cold night, but it was a good football night. And I think yeah. it was listed over 2,400 or so, which is pretty good. Yeah, well, it was, it was pretty cold. I, I suspect if it was a little nicer day, we'd have had a really great turnout. But... Uh, you know, the, a lot of them came and persevered through the cold weather. Right. Because it was cold. It was yeah. cold. And uh, they stayed till the end. Well, if you like football, they'll stick around, that's for sure. And the, the trip to Slippery Rock is a short one. I'm sure there'll be some good representation by IUP up there. So, yeah. Good luck against the Rock. Next one up for you. Thanks, Jack. Okay, good. So the winning streak continues, five in a row now. And the 6 o'clock kickoff at Slippery Rock. Uh, IUP wins it over California, and the next one for the Rock in a great tradition down through the years. We hope you'll join us for all the coverage this week. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. We hope you have a nice night.